And of course, um, you have to do this pre-processing. We pointed out that you can calculate all these pairwise similarities ahead of time. Um, that, actually, that wouldn't work actually if um, if you had a lot of items and you had to calculate, um, you know, for n items you have to calculate n squared um, similarities. That's um, that's probably prohibitive. However, the number of items which actually have enough users in common to be able to calculate a reliable similarity is much smaller. So. Um, <clears throat> and um, another important comment is that item similarities are supposed to be more stable than user similarities. Remember, the user similarities are the ones we discussed in the uh, previous uh, unit. Um, then we have in this neighborhood, and exactly how big that neighborhood is, it comments is it's typically quite small, but. Um, I don't quite. I, I say I have no. In, I don't know, and I don't see any strong documentation of those statements. As I've already discussed, you do not have to actually have n squared, where n is the number of um, items, because many uh, many item item uh, similarities cannot be calculated. So you you use some ingenious sparse stories, and you only store the ones that can be. You can also toss any things which are far apart. You just, if things are based, things of a very low similarity or negative similarity, that's equivalent to not knowing the similarity. Because we're not returning items that Alice hates. I don't, if you did, then you would actually want to keep these negative similarities. Because then you could say, hi Alice, we think you'd like this. And we know you, we also think you'll hate this. Uh, why don't you see if we're right? That might actually be an interesting marketing tool. If you gave her what she wanted and what um, you think she doesn't want, that would be uh, pretty interesting. I'm not certain that's actually done. Anyway, that's the brilliant idea of the night. Um, so we'll see how that, we, we won't do anything about that now. And um, there's lots of studies about the neighborhood size, and, and sometimes they get funny answers. Uh, I had a paper which I once read and uh, commented on, which had that feature of getting very, of suggesting very small um, neighborhood sizes. And if you look at the ratings, um, we have the explicit ratings. When you, when you go in there and read the book, I mean, you look at you know, I don't know Amazon. Many books have thousands or tens of thousands of rank ratings, and those tend to be rated on a scale from one to five is very common. One to seven is also uh, common. These are so-called Likert responses. They go from you know, bad to excellent in various gradations. And as we remember, we take out um, the grumpiness factor, namely whether somebody only ranks things from one to three because he thinks four, four and five are just don't exist in this terrible world we live in. You scale that out by taking out the mean and scale by the the uh, Variation of that user's uh, scaling. Um, there were studies which showed that the 10 point scale was better accepted than the movie domain. And actually, when we uh, looked at the uh, um, Kegel site, I, I think we looked at the joke recommender system where a continuous scale was used and a nice graphical input bar to have set the scale. And that sort of uh, Increased the fun of doing all of this and was proven to be quite successful. As far as I know, there is no um, people have studied whether it's better to use finer resolution, and I believe one to five is fine. There are enough uncertainties in this um, in this prediction, and most important, there are enough users we sum over that it doesn't actually we don't actually have to get it very accurate for any one user because you're getting your accuracy from lots of users. And oh, that's for the um, item item similarity. There's going to be lots of items for the user user similarity. Of course, users are not willing to rate many items. I'm afraid I never rate things on Amazon essentially. I let other people do the ratings, I just do the, uh, the um, browsing. And um, so you need to have better citizens than me who actually do ratings. And you need to persuade that. And Amazon's always sending me emails telling me to rate the buyer that I just brought something from. And I sometimes do that, 
but we know the buyers are get very unhappy unless they're ranked five. I mean, if you look at the ranking of buyers, they're very high because people are, are scared to rank those too low. That's an important feature of of um, any ranking system that uh, you get uh, great inflation or whatever it's called. Um, so there are also implicit ratings. Um, Namely, if you buy something, that's a presumably, it's not necessarily a positive rating, because you may hate it after you bought it. And then you may, sometimes you go back and write a ranking, which is terrible, but often you just uh, give up and try to suppress it and not mention it again. There are things like how long you spend on a page, which page you views, what things you download. These are all implicit ratings. And um, the, the advantage of them is you don't actually have to um, persuade the user to do anything. You see, I'm getting implicit ratings of these videos by just looking at the Google Analytics, which tells me how many, how often people read them, I mean, how much time they spend on each video. And the videos that presumably people spend a lot of time on are either impossible to understand or brilliant. And we can, uh, but that's, whereas the ones they spend no time on are either trivial or incomprehensible. So we have to, so probably the first category is the better category. So at least I can, I can use implicit information to try to improve this class. And you know, obviously all of this is in a real uh, system that's all put together in some giant package. I guess I said, Netflix has 100 items in this giant machine learning system. At least the one that won the competition did. I assume Netflix has even more these days. Um, so, and now we move on to um, some general comments on these technologies and um, the Kate nearest neighbor algorithm. And that's the end of this uh, lesson. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox. Let's go on to the next lesson.